Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about combinations and permutations and try to clarify the differences between the two. So the setup for what follows is uh, little n is going to denote the total number of objects. And they do have to be distinct. So total number of distinct objects, that's key. So we have n different things. So if you have 10 people total, um, we have 10 objects total. R is the total number we select. So number we are selecting. All right, and so there's two distinct but similar concepts. Um, so first is the notion of something called a combination. Okay, so a combination combination is a selection without regard to order. So is a selection without regard to order. So without regard to order. You might say, well, how is that possible? You know, when you select things, um, doesn't the order always matter? Not really. I mean, say you and your friend both applied for jobs at the 7-Eleven as cashiers. If your friend got the job first and you got the job, then you both got the job. But if you got to the job first and then your friend did, well, then you both got the job. So it didn't matter who got hired first because you both got the job. So that's an example of a combination. It's a selection where the order doesn't matter. So if you're hiring people for the same job, typically it doesn't matter who gets hired first because you both end up in the same place. Another example would be forming committees. Um, if there's 10 people and you're forming committees of four, it doesn't matter who gets picked first, right? Because everyone ends up in the same place at the same level. Everyone is a committee member. Now we have something called a permutation. So a permutation, well, a permutation is a selection with regard to order. You can also think of it as uh, an arrangement. I'll just say a permutation is a selection with regard to order. You can think of it that way. That's okay. I always think whenever the order matters, uh, whenever you're arranging things, it's a permutations problem. Whenever the order doesn't matter, um, it's a combinations problem. And the key is that we have distinct objects. Okay. So there are formulas for both of these. I'm going to write them, write them down. If you're watching this video on the internet, you, know, you may have um, software, right? Most people have software for this stuff, but let me show you the formulas. So n choose r. This is the number of combinations. This is how many possible selections there are. If you have n objects and you're choosing r of them, okay, it's n factorial. I'll explain what this means in a minute. Over n minus r factorial, r factorial. And for permutations, it's n p r. P means permute and it's n factorial over n minus r factorial, okay? So this is read n choose r. C means choose. It can also mean combination, I suppose. You have n objects and you're choosing r of them. Here you have n objects and you're permuting r of them. Permute means, means a range. So what's a factorial? Quick, quick crash course. Zero factorial is defined to be one. One factorial is one. 2 factorial, it's 2 times 1, so it's 2. 3 factorial is 3, 2, 1, 6. 4 factorial, well, you guessed it, it's 4, 3, 2, 1, and so on. So that's 24. So 6 factorial would be 6, 5, 4, 3. You just count down and you always stop at 1, okay? So that's uh, ooh, 720, I believe. Yeah, it should be 720 if my memory serves uh, correct. All right, so let's do a simple example and see if we can decipher which one to use, combinations or permutations. So, oh, this formula, again here, this formula here tells you uh, how many combinations there are. So how many ways can we select R objects from a group of N without regard to order? This formula over here tells us how many ways can we select R objects from a group of N with regard to order. So key concept, 
permutations, order matters, combinations, order does not matter. Let's do some, some simple examples. Say we have uh, 20 kittens in a race. I'm not sure how that can happen, but let's say there, there's a kitten competition. <laughs> how many ways how many ways to pick first, second, and third, third place in this kitten race, which is very, very important. All right, solution. So solution one. So in this case, uh, the order obviously matters because it matters who first place is, it matters who second place is, and it matters who third place is. So we have 20 kittens total, so n is equal to 20, and r is equal to 3 because we have three positions. So it's permutations because the order matters. So it's 20 p 3. I'm going to scroll up a little bit so you can see the formula. Okay, there it is. It's right up here. All right, so it would be 20 factorial over, right, n is 20, 20 minus 3 factorial. And again, if you have software for this and you know how to use it, uh, use the software. This is just doing it by hand just to show you extra life knowledge. 20 factorial over, now 20 minus 3, that's 17. Okay. So up top, 20 factorial is 20 times 19 times 18. And then let's be pro about this. I'm going to show you the way I do it. You just keep going. So 17, 16, 15, 14, right? The next one is 17, then 16. So the rest of this is just 17 factorial, right? Because it's 17, 16, 15, all the way to 1. And on the bottom, you also have the 17 factorial. This is absolutely beautiful once it makes sense. Boom. So you get 20 times 19 times 18. And this is actually 6,840, I believe. I should check. I used to have it memorized. Uh, let me double check. 20 times 19 times 18. Okay, I still have it memorized. Okay, so 6,840. Another way to do this, okay, an easier way is to draw a picture. Here's first place, here's second place, here's third place. So there's 20 ways to pick first place, 19 ways to pick second place, because you've already picked first place, and then 18 ways to pick third place. The number of ways to pick first, second, and third is the product via the multiplication rule. So not only do we get the same answer, but it's actually the same product. See, we get the same result. So the reason that is, is the way you come up, the way you prove this formula, the way you come up with this formula is to use the multiplication rule, right? You, you do the same thing we did here with the kittens, except you do it with n objects, and you're picking r of them with regard to order. So Whenever you have a permutations problem, you can always use the multiplication rule instead. Okay, one more simple example. Video's getting kind of long. Say we have um, 10 employees. How many ways to promote two of them to the same position, two of them? to manager. Okay, so you have 10 employees, you want to know how many ways to promote two of them to manager. So because it's the same position, the order does not matter. So this is a combinations problem. So solution, it's a combinations problem. So n is equal to 10, r is equal to 2. Okay, and the formula, I'll write it down again, it's n choose r equals n factorial over n minus r factorial, r factorial. So in this case, n is 10. So it's 10 choose 2. Okay, then it's 10 factorial. And then n is 10, so it's 10 minus 2, right? n minus r. So 10 minus 2 is 8. Got to be really careful here. And then r is 2. I usually use software for this, just most, most people do. 10 factorial is 10 times 9, and the rest of it is 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's 8 factorial. On the bottom, we still have 8 factorial. 
and the 2 factorial. The 8 factorials cancel. 10 times 9 is 90. The 2 factorial is 2, so we get 45. Kind of rush through that, but again, the idea is that you know when to use which. So when order doesn't matter, you use combinations. When order matters, you use permutations. Examples of combinations include hiring people for the same job, promoting people, forming committees. Permutations is anything where the order matters. Now, one more, one more subtle remark. Um, up here, it did say distinct objects. So sometimes you have situations. I know I said that was the last example, but just one more. Sometimes you have situations where you can't use either. Uh, here's an example. Uh, ATM pin numbers. So personal identification number numbers, <laughs> kind of redundant. These are four digits, zero through nine, and repetition is allowed. So when you go to the bank, if you have a pin number, you put this in the machine and you type in your super secret pin and it lets you access your bank account. The question is how many possibilities? So how many possibilities? So this is an example where, yes, the order does matter, right? If your pin is 2277, uh, that matters, right? If it's 2564, that matters. You can't put them in out of order. However, um, you can't use permutations. And the reason is the, the objects are identical, right? Um, so the only way to do this is the multiplication rule. So we have four numbers. And we need to figure out how many ways can we construct a pin number. Well, there are 10 choices for the first number. And the reason is you have to include the zero, right? Zero and then one through nine, that's 10 choices. Repetition is allowed. So you have 10 choices for the second number, 10 choices for the third number, and 10 choices for the last number. The number of ways to pick all four numbers is the product. So it's one, and then you can just count the zeros. Watch, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You can always do that when you're multiplying tens. So there are 10,000 possibilities for a four-digit pin number. That's it, kind of a long video. Um, and again, most of the time uh, when you're doing well, uh, permutations or combinations, you can use software to do all this stuff. I just wanted to show you how to do it by hand. That's it.